Here we go. Let's just share this out. All right, we're back. Let's get rid of this stuff. And let's see, what do we, what do we need to do? We need this little guy. Get that crap out of the way. Hello, hello everybody. So I've got a box of uh, four items here and we're gonna go through and do a quick shrink rip as they say. And um, hey, before we, uh, before we get started, I'm gonna try, let's see if I can switch camera modes, which is always dangerous here, and see what we Because I wanna tell you one thing. So the, the only thing that I thought would be really awesome about being, you know, writing and doing blogs and videos and stuff was that, you know, if I eventually got, um, you know, a few thousand people reading or following or watching or whatever that maybe some of the game companies particularly some of the major ones would go oh you know we should get that guy kevin his games as soon as where they're available and we should get them to him so he could have them and then he could do you know play them and help us sell more stuff and maybe he would do that for us and that would be awesome and and you know that would to me i thought that would be really cool if i did a you know if i you know played games and got them a little bit early and did a shrink rip and all that sort of fun stuff and did you know each individual game that maybe eventually I'd get noticed and uh, and I would get my my games be, you know not before everybody but soon right early right because they do early release stuff and <clears throat> all that sort of fun stuff and I know that that happens quite a lot with uh, other smaller publishers who uh, I guess maybe they, let's use the word, they appreciate a little bit that I can maybe help them sell some more product if I uh, at least just do a shrink rip or, you know, use my charming personality to talk about the games and the gameplay. Can't get any love out of any of the, the big boys. So, so rather than doing four shrink rips, I'm going to do one and we'll just have a look at all four games that I happen to have purchased that all happen to have turned up at once. Now, there's a reason why some games haven't turned up earlier, and that's because I did request them all to be shipped with uh, the uh, MBT expansion module. So that's my fault. But I was really, like, really hoping that I get all the MBT stuff as soon as it came out, instead of it being done in alphabetical order, or however it's done. Although I know that's not how it's done, because I know that there are a lot of other, um, perhaps, uh, more favored sons of the blogging world that have received their games and got to play them and and got after it with them uh, well before me and their names don't end in s or a for that matter all right so let's have a look at these so that's my only beef like with the whole thing i have this one expectation that would be the one thing that i would get not free games nothing else anyway let's have a look at these games First things first, <clears throat> let's do the easy one first. <clears throat> the, uh, the, the Warriors, um, I think I just lost everybody. Did I just lose everybody? That's pretty freaking hilarious. Maybe I didn't, who knows. Um, Battles of the Warrior Queen, so it's just a simple expansion for uh, Caesar Conquest of Gaul. You may have seen some of my gameplay uh, GIFs and, or GIFs, depending on how you like to say it. Uh, the, uh, and I also have a reading of uh, the Conquest of Britannia, uh, a reading from the uh, uh, Caesar in Gaul book. Uh, with the gameplay in the background. So very interested in this module. It has a handful of uh, scenarios, and this is all about, obviously, the rebellion, and everyone's seen, uh, knows who this woman is, but let's have a, a little look. I'm gonna try and angle the camera down. You don't see pictures of my kids. It's probably something illegal about that. Oh, hey, we got people saying hi. Gang, what's up? John, and we got Devin and Kyle. Yes, there is a hole in my table. That is correct. It's two uh, hundred pound pieces of mesquite that are four inches deep. There is that thing. Okay. <laughs> Do you like that? Look at that sucker. Here's a uh, here's a banana for scale. No, here's a little mini cube. Look how big it is. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's not even even either. I built this myself. Cut the tree down myself. 
was kind of manly time. Those days are gone. Now I'm just in a feet little, you know what. All right, so we've uh, got the histor historical background for each of the scenarios here. Of course, Warrior Queen special rules, some charts with historical art. I like it. Uh, one for each player and stuff on the back. Oh, this is just a simple GBH, GBOH stuff in the back. And of course, uh, let's see. So we've got specific tribe stuff. And why would they have the 9th Legion? I believe we already have the 9th, the 20th Legion. I don't think we have the 15th though. And it's a standard Legion as well. 8776, probably well, a couple more sevens. No big deal. We've got some leaders, Polinius. Good stuff. So that's going to be awesome. Let's have a look at the map. I wonder if it's a double sided map or a single sided map. It is double sided. Okay, in fact, it splits up this way. <clears throat> so we've got uh, potentially uh, some sort of landing engagement that we can run. I'll hold the camera up for you. There you go. Looks very much like Britannia. And then uh, that's the scenario, right, of uh, Conquest of Call. Similar, similar land features. Looks like a little forest, road, ambush opportunity. I don't know what that battle is. And then here we have, uh, that has got to be a Roman camp, right? Yeah. Up on the hill, classic positioning. Nice artwork. Looks good. I like the, the kind of crisp white for clear terrain. It really makes everything else pop out. Then you've got these gentle slope, <coughs> slope hexes. Is that, um, if that uh, fluorescent light or whatever it is, LED light is bothersome, we can turn that shit off. Uh, okay, so there's that. And then you, the, hey, by the way, so this is nice, I just noticed. Uh, full color, full color uh, scenario book. That's the first time I've seen that for Great Battles of History expansion module. So that's quite nice. In fact, yeah, here, here is this ambush. Oh, not so much of an ambush, but you know what I'm saying. Very cool. Okay. And I'm not even going to try and pronounce that word. Kamulodunum, Kamalundum, uh, whatever. Why do we even try to do that? Just embarrass myself. What's this battle, what is this one called? Mona Insulus. G, a simple GB version, and then Banventa, and that's the, uh, whoa, look at the size of that army. Must be reinforcements. Look at that. Can you see that okay? Oh, chat's on. Let me just give it a chat. I can't, I can't adjust the focus while the chat's on. Obviously, we get they get reinforcements because that's a that's a beat down. Maybe they don't. Let's have a look. Yes, they do. Shit! Hang on a second. That can't be right. Huh. Interesting. Okay, that's going to be a pretty interesting game. I'm looking forward to playing those. Very cool. Okay, so that was the first module. There you go. We'll put that all the way properly later. We'll just pop that down on the floor. Ah, so let's have a look at the next one, which I have been waiting for also for, for a long time here. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, at any cost. The Battle of Mets. I've played a, uh, what was the name of that game? Uh, hang on one second. Um, yeah, Teutons uh, from Hollenspiel had the Battle of Metz at very uh, much more abstracted scale, but in detail. This this game, Herman Lutman, uh, it's the main reason why I bought it. I've become a huge Lutman fan. He has, uh, I think, taken on a 
I don't know, taking on one of those mantles with uh, game design that is very fresh, number one, and very diverse, number two. Uh, he's done some very uh, interesting card-driven, diceless, uh, World War One oriented titles that are uh, pretty interesting, coming from Tiny Battles. And he has done games for, I believe, uh, Hollenspiel. There's this guy, and he's also done some, uh, oh yeah, Revolution Games. So he has, he's got a, a number of uh, American Civil War titles out, none of which I've played, but I have friends who have played them. And uh, I think this system will play very similarly because uh, it's a chip pool based uh, mechanic. And there's also some other interesting things in this, this game as well. So let's have a look at this guy and uh, see <clears throat> what all the fuss is about and really here I'm not going to get too deep into the detail of the game system because I haven't had a chance to read the rules yet uh, I like the artwork let's see if I can zoom out a little bit for you I'm out of the way, here we go really nice artwork there and yeah, look, I, okay, so it goes, you can't see it because I've got this other game set up here, but it goes the full length of the board, uh, the full length of the table. <coughs> so, first up, <coughs> no idea who that's from, can't read that writing, but thank you for checking the game. Full color rule book, which seems to be the standard, uh, standard operating procedure for... GMT these days on the shiny paper, which makes it hard to make notes on, but so be it. We'll download the living rules anyway and uh, print them off. Uh, so, interesting time period to 1870 because you've got a uh, technological uh, innovation period there. It's kind of similar to the American Civil War where you know linear combat was fading away. You've got the telegraph, you've got... Uh, uh, rail, you've got you know, a pretty decent um, weaponry that is a higher rate of fire, more accurate and a longer range. And uh, unfortunately in Europe, you know, you're still using Napoleonic style linear classical combat uh, mechanics or sorry, tactics, I should say, and um, pretty deadly situation. So I think this will be a bloody campaign. All right, you don't need to see every page of, page of the rules, but uh, postures and commands is one of the things that I think will make this game stand out a little bit. Uh, the, the limited amount that I've read on it, it's going to give you uh, a, a deeper, richer experience just based on the 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 your choice of whether you're in a uh, uh, in command. First of all, in command range, but then uh, whether or not you're in a defensive mode or offensive mode. Uh, and then you know, when your chick gets pulled, you know, that's also going to affect your, your situation as well. Obviously, morale is going to be a big deal here. Uh, so I don't know too much about this system. I'm buying it based on the credibility of the designer more than anything else. Uh, so anyway, there's your whole book. Let's see what it clocks in at. We've got a healthy 20 right to the back. 28 pages. That's got to be an example. There we go. This looks like an example to me. So a four page example, 24 pages of rules, pretty straightforward stuff by the looks of it. Doesn't look like any of that's gonna hurt your brain too bad. Let's check out the rest of it. <clears throat> Let's see if any of the geniuses who are watching can comment on anything. Yeah, high gloss. it's all high gloss these days. Everything is high gloss. Uh, it's look at even all this right and not, I mean these are I've got fairly bright lighting here so that's probably affecting the sheen as well so step loss metrics uh, differential base combat by the looks of it and all of your shifts are presented on the chart, so you should be able to work off the ba off the back of that pretty straightforwardly. Then there's fire combat as well, which looks like a uh, number of strength points firing. 
adjustments based on terrain and type of unit range looks like the Prussian artillery is going to be more effective than the French by the looks of it there if I'm reading that correctly don't know for a certain break tests okay so two of those bad boys uh, event chits as well for both sides and what's on the back terrain effects chart sequence of play so here's your sequence of play and uh, uh, so here we go let's see let's have a look at the sequence of play here so you've got your all the different activation steps fire movement assault rally out of command and then end of turn and then I'm imagining that we will uh, you know these activations are going to be by uh, by formation so that's that for that, that guy probably the same here for this dude yep and what do we got here these look like scenario charts yep one, two, three, four, five. That looks like the, one of the main, perhaps the main scenario here. And another large one on the back here. So two large scenarios and four smaller ones, six all and up. One of the challenges you have with uh, a game that is battle specific is that often you're, you're paying between 40 and $75 for the game and you uh what is going on here and you are uh oh okay they just they've done that funky printing method uh you know you're paying 70 bucks and you're getting one battle so it's nice to see a, a game or a simulation uh, give us some more historical choices here and, and give us half a dozen different scenarios to explore with now i'm a little curious i, I really don't like this form form of uh printing where we print the, the counters upside down, it, it's just annoying. And uh, I know that it can be done well, and it probably makes it easier, and there's less errors done this way, but uh, it just it's just frustrating to me. Okay, so I guess, you know, decent artwork, decent, decent counters, no, uh, they're, they're not flimsy by any means. A low number of information chits, and I like that. The last thing you want when you've got a game that looks like this, uh, and let's have a look at the map, is to uh, cover up all these beautiful counters, or worse still, like Labatai, have to flip them over to their white side to uh, use them effectively. It's a one mapper. Let me turn this over. The game look, the map looks much bigger on the uh, on the back of the box, doesn't it? But here you go. Let me hold the camera up so you get a feel for it. Thematic, nice artwork, uh, campaign day track here. Units for rebuild on the right hand side of near the Mosul River. Uh, let's have a let's see if I can zoom in for you and get you out of the glare. Let's see what you think. I think when I zoom in it gets pretty pretty fuzzy anyway so you're probably not seeing what I'm seeing but you can you can see you've got uh, your different terrain types the, the, the hills and uh, the Horn River over there on that side and there's your there's your layout right all in all a pretty attractive package and then of course here's your playbook Oh, I love this artwork here. Look at that. That's fantastic. What a great portrait. Got a prisoner here being uh, interrogated. They, uh, I don't know who they are, but they, they certainly have the essence of being Prussian, don't they? Uh, so anyway. All right, Herman, well done, my friend. Well done. I'm trying to get Herman to do an interview with me, but uh, he's claiming he's too busy. Probably means he doesn't want to talk to me, even though he chats online quite a bit. We're going to wear him down. We'll get there.
All right. Uh, so each of the different scenarios, I'm not going to. There's so there's two. If there's a full day battle scenario, some smaller stuff going on here. Oh, look at this setup uh, detail. Okay, that's nice. Like it. And then uh, specific details to set up. I'm going to guess there'll be hopefully some historical notes in the back here. Yep, there's full designer notes. There's one, two, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, there's a whole bunch of detail here. This is fantastic. All right, orders of battle as well. Oh, it's nice to see. So this looks like it's been particularly well researched. We'll, we'll see. Uh, a bunch of playtesters here. We know a lot of these names. Bowen and Mossman and uh, Sawyer. Doug Miller. Matt Ward. Very nice. Okay, good stuff. So there's that. All right, well, let's put that in the box. Give me a second. Now let's have a look at the MBT stuff. If you're still interested, we can do that. Now all these, uh, we have to work out when I'm gonna to get to these, uh, particularly Battle of Mets. I'm gonna to have to do some reading before I can even uh, have a look at it. All right, which one do you guys wanna see first? Oh, that's good. I'm gonna teach my son how to make Manhattans. And uh, he made this guy. It's quite good. All right, let's have a look at the Germans first. Do you get any yeas or nays? Okay. Yeah, Kyle, you spend more time on CSW than I do. I, I try to avoid it if I can. All right, now, the thing with this game, this expansion, gotta have the base game. You are only getting, um, you are only receiving uh, German units. You are not receiving any Soviet units or no Soviet expansions uh, or, or additional uh, models of vehicles or anything like that. So it's just the Germans and I think 10 scenarios and a handful of maps, probably eight if I recall, double-sided no doubt, but there should be some nice terrain in here and we'll see if there's any unique and special rules as well. So let's have a look at this guy first. I guess if you want to see the back of the box. In fact, look, there's one of the, there's one of the unique maps. Looks like an airfield of some sort. You've got the aircraft, you've got what it's good for and all the rest of it, the scale. And if you know the game, then that's great. If you don't, then go look at the MBT page 100 meters of hex, 15 seconds to 15 minutes a turn. That's pretty, pretty generous. Generous individual tanks and squads. It's uh, obviously uh, armored fighting vehicle centric. All right, so let's let's have a look at the maps first because let's get the let's get the let's get the whining out of the way and then we'll have a look at the good stuff. All right, uh, I, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be hard on the maps here. Uh, because I don't like the color scheme and there's not much you can do to make me change my mind about that I know why they were I've um, been told why they were made this color and so they ma they matched the uh, the Panzer series but I think just because that that's not a good enough reason to me this is not this does not look look, look like Europe to me it looks like the steps there's another map, <clears throat> nice long river and some roads, big town. There's a flip side, that's nice clear open terrain. You see lots of that in Germany. <clears throat> Not, maybe up in the northern plains you do, who knows. Oh, here we go, here's your airfield. And now there's some heavily wooded stuff, that's gonna be fun to fight over. The hill in the middle, what's on the back of this guy? Oh, big city, now that is gonna be interesting to fight on as well. All right, so that's, you know, Looks pretty cool, right? Uh, notice there's, there's a long straight road through most of the map, so that is gonna allow us to have some pretty extended, kind of a highway style, you know, fast breach type of action. But wait, there's one more. This one, another heavily wooded map. And then an open, some open terrain. So, all well and good, that's great. The 
hands are colored, that's nice. Uh, disappointing as all shit, but anyway. All right, let's have a look at, <clears throat> oh, now here we go, look. This is matte finish, and we'll have a look at that in a second. Let's have a look at our counters. I don't know that I'm gonna be able to do these justice with uh, the zoom capability here, but let's find, <laughs> let's hold the counters up the right way first. So two A, and it's supposed to be two times a leopard. Yeah, two A three, and uh, where is the other one? Yeah, the one A four. So uh, we'll have a look at the cards in a second, but you know, you've all seen these before. They're pretty, pretty standard counters. The artwork's nice. Not awesome. A bunch of leopards. Damn, boy, look at those things. This is going to be so epic. We played a uh, a double blind version of this with just the base system. It was fantastic. We're going to have to look at this. I've not seen these commanders before, and I don't know what they're for. So I'm going to, we'll, we'll dig into that if you're interested. It looks like they're crew commanders or perhaps uh, squadron commanders or troop commanders, depending on the on the army and look it looks like it's also available for the uh, so maybe it's a new optional rule available for the soviets as well turrets some squads for the germans oh there are some russian forces i didn't say that on the back more t-80s some more t-72s sweet and more m1s get the get the dickens get the dickens look at all those m1s Nice. Okay. No idea what these are for. ATM dodge counters. That was smart of them to uh, provide those. I like it. Uh, hover counters. Okay. So three sheets of uh, counters. Let's check out what the... Um, we'll get to the cards in a second. Here's the rule book. Now, now, here's where you can really see the difference, right? Look how easy this is to look. Easy on the eye this is without the gloss it's so much better and if you want to mark this rule book up you can you can use a pencil on this you can use a felt tip pen or whatever the case may be and you can you know get after it and you know I'm, these are games that i'm keeping until the missus sells them right um okay so target acquisition bonus ah that's what that's for right let you know that that's eligible we know what that is now leaders are new and here are all the different effects that uh, are available here hope you can see that okay i'm not letting you obviously read it right now but uh what is this talking about here i skipped a page controlling objectives airfield okay so just new terrain feature discussions <clears throat> and then the leader capabilities by the looks of it and rankings and all that sort of good stuff and then one of the things that's awesome about this is you know these full ob's in here uh, based on the time period, what did the you know a Panzer Brigade look like, and all that sort of good stuff. So I've used these uh, the World War II ones out of uh, Panzer uh, to uh, build scenarios and, and other good stuff for or and help other folks build scenarios by referencing these. So I love these things. And then uh, uh, capabilities uh, summary uh, and, and costs and things, so you can make your own scenarios. There you go. And then here, here we have, there uh, should be uh, a dozen or 10 scenarios. Three, nice three mapper here. And then you have the forces that you're dealing with there. So this is going to be a tank on tank deal. 62s versus leopards. Here we go. Tanks and infantry, both sides. Check southwest border. Oh, these are going to be great. Look how this goes uh, from heavy woods to open here. That's going to be cool. You know, one thing I didn't see really in the uh, MBT uh, box, original box, was any use of choppers. There's one scenario that has US choppers. Oh, this is big. And, uh, and that was it. There was nothing else. No, very few aircraft as well. Lots of artillery, but uh, it'd be nice to see. Here we go. So, okay, that's an MI-8, but there's no, oh, here's some Hinds. Okay, so that's the first time I've seen a Hind uh, added into a scenario. That's pretty nifty. They're very powerful. Um, cool, look at all this stuff. These are gonna be awesome scenarios. Look how big this guy is. Dude. Brothers in arms. 
arms, this one's called, a holding force and a relief force, which is going to have Apaches in it, sweet, Bradley's, Abrams, oh, this is going to be kick-ass, I may just lose my tiny mind, oh, it's a five-map scenario, yeah, get some, look at that stuff, okay, so there's a bunch of cool I nearly said the S-H-I-T word. Cool stuff. All right. Epic. Hey, let's check these out real quick. Let me uh, cut these open so we can have a squeeze. I just don't want to scratch the cards. I wish they'd make these box th boxes three inches deep. I'd pay the extra two or three dollars. For that so because so the storage is always a hassle so now you've got these cards i really like these cards how these cards are done so here's your leopard that's quite a dark uh, camo in this light i don't know if this is going to help at all yeah and then you've got your looks artillery another type of leopard so that's uh, the 1a4 and the 2a3 and let's see, penetration of 64, 86, pretty decent armor, but then they're going to get chewed up. Now, here we're talking, okay, Oop. now we're talking 120, 100, strong armor, kills standard knockouts on 3 through 6 and 3 through 5. Okay, here's a 2A4, which has even stronger armor, 120, 121, um, and chop room and stuff like that as well. Jaguar. There's your inf inf infantry units, your tornadoes. Oh gosh, that's going to be awesome flying tornadoes at that, that scale. Uh, Martyrs. Obviously thin-skinned, and uh, look at the pen rate on that bad boy, 130. That's going to kill, that Milan will kill everything, pretty much. That'll, that'll even take out an M1. Oh, these are awesome. And I get this stuff on the back as well, obviously, guys, but, uh, and then the choppers. Scouting choppers and combat choppers. All right, so there's that. Um... I'll put all this away in a minute. Let's put this to one side. Let's have a look at the uh, Brits. Here, let me just check in. Uh, blah 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 blah. Okay, looks like Brian Johnson is playing Mets this weekend, so that'll be awesome. You need to give us all some feedback on the big board uh, Facebook page if you're on it or Twitter, please, uh, Brian. That'll be awesome, John. Um, you know these are these scenarios are long. These scenarios are every bit of. 40 turns and it's a good 30 40 minutes to play a turn at least thin paper maps i'm right there with you yeah the folds are uh, there are a lot of folds you gotta you gotta you really have to uh put a piece of plaques over the top so it's not a big deal uh yeah okay so here we go so let's check these maps out first what we got here? Oh, look, it's it's a Russian... Vi oh, no, it's a British... No, it's a Belgian vi village. That looks just like Belgium, doesn't it? Not? A highway? Cool. <coughs> this is some sort of water treatment plant, apparently. I read down to the back of the box. I, I don't know much about the specifics on the maps. What? Crunch uh, two hills. Two big hills, right? 
Once again, straight roads going through. Maybe this is the water treatment plant. Because, you know, it has water in it. The other one's maybe a power plant. Uh, your standard curvy road and a couple more hills. That's going to be interesting if you put a couple of uh, linked hill uh, maps together. Pretty open and relatively open. So pop those all to one side. Out of the way. Of course, they're British chieftains. Got the playbook. Let's look at the counter sheets and let's see what extra goodies are in here that we didn't know that there were. All right, one of three. I'm trying to hold that up. Hopefully, you can see that okay. All righty. Chieftains, Mark twos. Nice. These 432s. Played with those in World of War. They're nifty little weapons, platforms, scorpions, some kind of like light scout cars, bridge builders. It's interesting, there's three bridge building units. See those? Mm. So chieftains all across the top there. Interesting. And what's on? Oh, you know, I should have looked on the back of the other ones too. Dang it, because they have counters on the back. I forgot. We'll, we'll do that. Okay. I always forget to look at the back. I'm so stupid. Challenges, warriors, more challenges. Strikers, nice scimitars, little scout cars, sweet. All right, same leader, leader, leader things. Choppers and tornadoes. Some British chaps fighting. And uh, on the back here, more leaders, more choppers. Nice. And a swag of more of Abrams and T-80s. Oh, we are going to be able to put together a big ass. I wonder if we could almost get um, a company, two companies worth, or battalions worth of uh, T-80s. That'd be just epic. How epic would that be? Very. Um, those info counters, you've all seen that before. Then 64s on the back, 72s on the back. M1P Abrams. And look, they're easy punch. <laughs> You little bastard. All right, get in there. Because uh, I'm going to try and put that back in there because that's who I am. Um, which is not easy. But there we have it. T55s. Look at that. I don't think I've seen T55s before. I must have. I wonder if there's a card in here for me. M1s. Lots of M1s. Okay, okay, okay. All right, let me see what's on the back of these guys real quick. Because we don't want to miss out on any goodies. More leaders. I just popped stuff out of there. Okay. Yeah, just leopards. So you can just choose. Oh, there's M133s. Here we go. 2A4s. And I think on the other side, we had 1A4s and 2A3s. So there are three types of leopard. Bastard, come on, dude. Just not now. Don't come out now. T64s in the back here and T55s. This almost looks like a just a flat up, flat out copy, right? Uh, both for both have the same additional Soviet units presented to them. All right, so we looked at all that, we looked at the aircraft. We'll open the cards up. Let's have a look at the book here playbook once again very evocative artwork you know they're, they're, they're crushing it with the artwork uh, lately power grid that's what it is and a tank farm that's where they grow tanks in those things <clears throat> right moving right along leaders same as the last time US leaders etc and then here we go with our order of battle I don't know how much time you want to spend on that stuff. It's it's all pretty standard. There's, you know, you know. I'd like to see the Canadian one. I'd like them to get enough orders out for the Canadian one. So here we got a three mapper. This will be a fairly light one to get started. Yep. So that's going to be chieftains versus T sixty twos. Once again, a pretty straight up easy battle. Um, and then they scale them up as as they go through here. 
Three challenges versus nine T-72s. 12 T-72s and six BMP-2s. That's a, that's a tough battle. Oh yeah, am I zoomed in here? Yeah, there you go. Hmm. I wonder if there's uh, any decent um, counter-attack scenarios in here where the, where the NATO forces get to go on the counter-attack. Power strike, I imagine that's trying to grab the power station there. Oh, this is a big battle with relief forces arriving. Another four mapper there. Oh, this is just epic stuff. All right. Mine plows. Oh, mine plows, that's more offensive than defensive. Maybe this is a counterattack scenario. Long run east. Five days into the war, both combatants are finding fluid situation. Yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Fourth Armored Division, 20th Armored Brigade is on a collision course with the 79th Guard Tank. All right. And that is a, another five map scenario. That's a decent sized one. That'd be a, just huge. These would be great to play opposed. I wish I could get guys in Austin interested in playing this, but no joy. No joy. All right, epic. Let's have a look at the cards and then we'll, uh, we'll call it bygones and uh, we can kind of get on with our evenings. I'm going to go play Rise of the Roman Republic after this. Move on to turn three of that. Get stuck into that. I'm going to finish setting up this uh, Thai Bomber game on the left over here. Um, okay, so we've got our Chieftains and Challengers. Let's see if you can see that, okay. That look pretty nice. What do we got in terms of pen rates here? So 116. Pretty good, uh, pretty good armor ratings, but not not awesome, right? Swing fire ATGMs. Look at the penetration rate on that. Wow, that's a beat down. That's gonna blow up just everything. <laughs> oh wow! Nice. Milan's. This is really interesting stuff. I, I, I'd love to know how they worked out the, the, the grading of the scaling of all these weapons. <clears throat> Artie, Chief of Bridge Layer. Yes, that's great. Um, if anyone wants to see that or not, there it is. It obviously has very limited capabilities. It lays its ass down and that's it. Tornadoes. Sweet, we saw those earlier on. Harry, oh, I didn't notice we had Harriers. Sexy. Uh, love these guys as well. These, these are. That's a, that's a mortar. Here's one with. Uh, nope. That's a machine gun. Where's the 432 that has the ATGM on it? Warriors and scimitars. Can you see okay? Is this focused? I'm really looking at the stuff. Should be paying more attention to you guys. Links and the gazelles. All right. So that's the cards. That's the maps. That's the counters. That's the playbook. The OB. Sweet. So there's a lifetime of gaming <clears throat> right there. If I play each of those scenarios twice, we're probably talking about months of gameplay right there. Uh, that's impressive. Impressive stuff. Like it's a great package. Despite the artwork, you know, you, 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 I will say this, you very quickly forget about it. Once, uh, once the, the, the rounds start flying down range, you are uh, the last of your, the least of your worries. So while I bitch about it, I just bitch about it because I like things to be, you know, improved upon and better and more better, more better, the bestest. And 
I think this was just a poor choice, but now we're, we're here and we're in it, and that's the way it's going to be uh, for the future. So that is what it is. So we're just going to, I'm going to love this system regardless. Ah. Pardon me. <laughs> so there we go. Four games. That's a monster 45 minute live stream of uh, my GMT box that finally arrived. I'm so happy to have it and very pleased. I will look forward to getting as much of this on the table as soon as I can. You guys have questions, now's the time to do it. I'm gonna give you 10 or 15 seconds and then I'm gonna cut the button or punch the button as the case may be. And whoever joined just now, sucks to be you because we're wrapping up. Yeah, that is a total box fight. Okay, I have Braxton, what's up, dude? All right, guys, <clears throat> I will catch everybody later. Thank you very much for tuning in and we'll look forward to talking to you soon.